Good morning and welcome in our Savior's name. Special welcome to any guests and visitors we have with us. Joy and pleasure to have you with us. Today is the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. I know I said that last week, but this week it actually is the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. And today we look at our Old Testament reading. Kind of a unique time uh, and, and such a, a joy to be able to dive into the Old Testament um, and see how it relates to our life. So today we look at Ezekiel chapter 33. God reestablishes Ezekiel's call. And he uses the imagery as of a watchman. And so that'll be our discussion for today as we look at uh, Ezekiel's call as a watchman. And uh, and how does that relate to our call today as as God's people? So that'll be our reflection for today. Um, Today, uh, we'll, be, we'll begin our service with the hymn, Hark the Voice of Jesus Crying, a very suiting uh, hymn as we talk about the call that Jesus has for us to be his watchman, and we begin that conversation. Uh, we recognize that this hymn uh, reflects that same message that Jesus calls us out into the harvest fields to proclaim his word and to harvest um, Uh, what the Holy Spirit prepares for us to do. So uh, pay close attention to what what you're singing in this next hymn. I pray God's richest blessings on you as he comes to us once again through his good gifts in word and sacrament. As we gather together in the presence of our great God, we are reminded that when we invoke the name of God, we are recognizing our baptism, that God dwells within us, that he nurtures that faith within us. 
And as we gather here in this place, God has promised that He will be with us. And so when we invoke His name, we know that He has promised to be here. How incredible. So we make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. Therefore, you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's Word and call upon Him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as His people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. As we gather here, we recognize our unworthiness before God. We recognize that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition and that daily we fall short. But that's why we gather here. We come here repenting of our great God. And He does not respond out of pure judgment and wrath, but He responds out of love and grace. He sends His Son to die for you. And for His sake, He forgives you all of your sins. And therefore, as a called and ordained servant of the Word, and by the... And by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceeds, Grant to us, your humble servants, your holy inspiration, that we may set our minds on the things that are right and by your merciful guiding accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for this, the 14th Sunday after Pentecost, is from Ezekiel chapter 33. This will serve as our text for today. So you, son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die. And you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from his way, The wicked person shall die in his iniquity. But his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn away, to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, that person shall die in his iniquity, and you will have delivered your soul. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Romans chapter 13. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a, t- not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no, one, no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval, for he is God's servant for good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of the conscience. For the same reason, you also pay taxes. For the authorities are ministers of God, attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them. 
Taxes to whom taxes are owed. Revenue to whom revenue is owed. Respect to whom respect is owed. Honor to whom honor is owed. Owe no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covenant, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does not wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now take a moment to reflect on our special music, Not For A Moment, sung by our very own Kaylee Tan. What a wonderful message. Not for a moment, not even for a moment, has God forsaken us. 
What an important message to hear. Our Gospel reading is according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Glory to You, O Lord. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to Him a child, He put he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like a child, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humble, humbles himself like this child is the greatest in, in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world for the temptations to sin, for it is necessary that temptations come, but woe to the one by whom the temptation comes. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes be thrown into the hell of fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than the other ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen to even the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join in our song of the day, Shout to the North. Men of faith, rise up and sing Of the great and glorious King You are strong when you feel weak In your brokenness complete Shout to the north and the south Sing to the east and the west Jesus is Savior to Up, 
church with broken wings, fill this place with sons again of our God who reigns on high by his grace again will fly. Shout to the north and the south, sing to the east and the west, Jesus is Savior to all. Lord of heaven and earth, we will shout to the north and the south, sing to the east and the west, Jesus is Savior to all, Lord of heaven and earth, Lord of heaven and earth, he is Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In 2019, a a great World War I movie was produced. 1917 is a British film about World War I starring George McKay and Dean Charles Chapman with supporting actors such as Benedict Cumberbatch. This great film is based loosely around Operation Eldritch, which was uh, Albrecht, sorry, uh, which was an operation in World War I. As, uh, as the Western Front was in, in France, uh, the, the, German, uh, the German armies make a tactical retreat. And they back to what is called the Hindenburg Line. And as they make this tactical retreat, it's not... It's not running scared, but it's setting up a line that is more fortified. A line that would certainly catch the British forces off guard. Well, when a segment of the British Army hear about this strategy, they need to warn the rest of the British Army. And so two men are assigned to travel through enemy territory. To travel through no man's land, some of the, the most terrifying areas on the, on, the, uh, on the battlefield. The land between the two lines of armies that are shooting at one another. These two, these two messengers are entrusted with this important message and this dangerous mission. And as they make this journey, they face danger of, of losing life and limb around every corner. But their mission is important. They go to warn the British forces to stop this assault, stop Operation Albrecht before it starts. And in the end, this would save nearly 1,600 soldiers from falling into a trap. Well, just like these soldiers carry an important message, We hear about Ezekiel, a prophet from the Lord who carries a message of incredible importance. I want to go back and read that whole section. Not just the section that we read for our readings, but the whole context of what's going on. So I would encourage you, pull out your Bibles and follow along with me as we look at Ezekiel chapter 33. I'll read it for us. The Word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, speak to your people and say to them, If I bring the sword upon a land, and the people of that land take a a man among them and make him their watchman, and if he sees the sword coming upon the land and blows the trumpet and warns the people, then if anyone hears the sound of the trumpet does not take warning, and the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and he did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself. But if he had taken warning, he would have saved his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, so that the people are, are not warned, and the sword comes and takes any one of them, that person is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will be required of the watchman's hand. So you, son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. 
If I say to the wicked, O wicked one, then you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from his way, that wicked person shall die in his iniquity. But the blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked one to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, that person shall die in his iniquity. But you will have delivered your soul. And you, son of man, say to the house of Israel, Thus have you said, Surely our transgressions and our sins are upon us. We rot away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, As I live, declares the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked would turn from his way and live. Turn back. Turn back from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? This is the Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we dive into the Old Testament, we receive a hard message. The people of Israel have turned away from God. And this, the world is filled with sin. See, God cannot tolerate sin. God is good. He is pure. And sin is a disease that has tainted His creation. Sin is the embodiment of evil. And as it, as it affects the entire world and it affects us within our hearts, God sends warning. God needs to bring judgment on the world. He needs to cleanse the world of sin one way or another. Now if God didn't care, He could just wipe us all out. Wipe out the whole world and just start over. That would get rid of sin. And then... He could start on with the new creation. But that's not what He does. Instead, He sets a watchman. He warns us. Ezekiel becomes a watchman for the people. A watchman was a person who stood up on the the city walls or just outside the village. And the point of the watchman was to watch for dangers that might come after the village. So whether it be an army or an ambush or some kind of attack, the watchman was there to catch it first. To warn the people so that they could prepare and save life. God provides a watchman for His people. A warning. God needs to judge sin. And so the warning is that we need to turn from sin. We need to we need to get rid of the sin in our lives. And so God sends Jesus. Jesus lived the perfect life. He became the spotless Lamb and He was the sacrifice for us all. His death and resurrection have cleansed us of our sin. And now we don't need to receive the judgment that comes upon sin. But we are washed clean by the blood of of the Lamb. But God wants all people to be saved. He knows that this judgment must come. He has to get rid of sin. And so He sends a warning because He wants as many people as can to heed the warning, to repent, and to turn to Christ. Because Christ Christ is the spring of life. Christ is where we are cleansed and welcomed into God's family. And so God warns us and He warns the world of His impending judgment. Not because He wants us to feel His wrath. Not because He wants us to suffer and die. But because He wants us to live. And He wants us to know of His love. Well, you have heeded the call. You're here. You have have heard of God's judgment. You know that there is judgment for sin. You know that there is a problem here. That God cannot tolerate sin. And if you want to be a part of that new creation, you must be cleansed of all unrighteousness. But you also know of the promise that Jesus has cleansed you of all unrighteousness. He takes away your sins and welcomes you into the family of God. 
That's why you gather here. Because here we receive God's forgiveness, life, and salvation. Through the words of confession and absolution. Through the Holy Supper of our Lord. Through the pro- proclamation of His Word. We are reminded again and again of how much God loves us and forgives us. Well, just like Ezekiel was called to be a watchman for Israel in ancient times, that mantle fell from prophet to prophet to prophet, and eventually it landed on the shoulders of the church. It lands on our shoulders now to be the watchman. To be the one who goes out into the world and proclaims that warning. But more so, who proclaims God's love and the promise. We are watchmen. We're called to give that warning. And yet, there's so many things that seem to try to get in our way. Satan tries to stop us from that task every day. We find concern with conflict. As we go out into the world and we proclaim the Word of God, we receive judgment. We receive persecution. Harsh arguments. As we we, uh, proclaim this Word to our friends and our family, we worry about the loss of relationship. The loss of our friendships. And then this warning takes an enormous amount of courage. To go out and to proclaim the Word of God takes incredible amounts of courage and takes so much to get out of our comfort zone, to get up off of our hands and go and proclaim that Word to a world that needs to hear it. We could make every excuse in the book. We could talk about Um, all the reasons why not to do something. But the question that I have for you is, if not you, then who? If you're not going to proclaim the Word of God to those around you, then who will? You are the one who God has called. God has called His church, you and me, to proclaim the Word of God to all of those around us. And if it's not going to be us, then who will do it? Who will go for the Lord? We have been warned. We have been given the message that we need to go and proclaim to the world the worries, the things that we need to be concerned about. And to proclaim to them the great message that the Lord has come. There is a solution that does not end in death and hell. Jesus and His love for us. And as we go and we proclaim that to those around us, some will take heed and we will rejoice with them as they come into the family of God, as they are baptized and welcomed into Jesus' love. We will rejoice with them. The sad thing is is that some will not. Some will not take heed but instead will stay outside the family of faith, rejecting this message, rejecting the warning, rejecting Jesus. And when they do that, it's on them. But why, why do we have so much trouble with this? Do we not care enough about those people out there? Why do we sit on our hands so often instead of proclaiming the Word as we need to do? We must get up and go. But this isn't a task that Jesus calls us to and says, good luck. No, He's equipped us for this. He's given all that we need. He came down to earth. He lived the perfect life. He died on the cross to take away our sins. You are redeemed. You have the message. You've been warned. And you've received the message of hope and love from Jesus Himself. And so, 
We are equipped with the message we are to tell. We know what we must say. And then in the waters of baptism, Jesus promises that He will always be with us. And He puts His Holy Spirit within us to nurture the faith within us, to give us the words to say, to to help us grow in our faith so that we understand what it is we must say, so that we understand who God is and what He has revealed to us in His Holy Word. The Holy Spirit nurtures us in the faith and pushes us out, giving us the strength to do this. And then we recognize that we aren't alone. Jesus is with us every step of the way. The Holy Spirit is working within us every moment. Uh, Also, we are part of a family. We work through this mission and ministry together. It's not just you, but it's all of us. We serve in, in our own lives, serving our neighbor, serving our friends, serving those around us, proclaiming the Word of God to those in our personal relationships. But then we also support one another. We lift each other up and we work together for the benefit of all. And then we have our faith. The Holy Spirit nurtures that within us. When we do our daily devotions, when we gather around God's Word in Bible class, here in the assembly, as we hear the Word of God and we're strengthened by His good gifts, our faith grows. It gives us a a more firm understanding of what it is we believe. And then we go into the world and we boldly proclaim why it is we have the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. Where does this hope and joy come from? That is our proclamation. Okay, so it's fine to talk about, yes, we need to go. Right? We can all agree on that. Yes, this is what we need to do. We need to go out and we need to proclaim. But how? How do we do that? Well, I've got three major ways in which we proclaim the Word of God in our daily lives. First, is that we invite people into our lives. And I'm not just talking about acquaintances or seeing each other at the uh, supermarket. I'm talking about getting into the privacy of our lives. I had a friend who, who reminded me that we as Lutherans we're really bad at sharing our experiences, sharing how God is at work in our lives. We're, we're pretty good at talking about you know, the foundational stuff of our faith, but how is He working in your life? See, that personal testimony is important for the faith. The author of Hebrews points out that we are to use that personal testimony as as a guide for our daily life. As we live, we look to those who have gone before us. We look to those who are faithful and we learn from them. And so, in our daily lives, as we go about our lives, we proclaim those things that God does for us in our lives. Because that personal testimony is so much more meaningful for other people to hear. And so we proclaim that Word to those around us. The second thing is that we have to be willing to have hard conversations. In our culture, in our world, it is hard to talk about faith. Faith is is too personal. Faith is, is something that we don't talk about or we're too scared to talk about. But it's important that we have these conversations, these spiritual conversations, to talk about the things going in, on in our lives. How do we get through these hard things? Where is our hope? We need to have spiritual conversations that lead us to the Gospel. And then the third thing is in our relationships. As you build friendships and relationships, Don't just keep them within our church body, but go out into the world. Build relationships with those who have not heard the Word of God. And as you grow in your friendship, opportunities to share your faith will come. 
And as you, as you grow in your friendship, you'll become more and more comfortable with having those tough conversations. And in those opportunities, share your faith boldly. Share what Jesus is doing in your life and what He can be doing for their life. We have an important message. A message that will save many souls. It's been entrusted to us as God's church. We are called to proclaim that message. So will you answer the call? As Jesus' soldiers, will you go out and heed the orders that your Lord has given you? Or will you continue to sit on your hands and wait for somebody else to do the task? Will you answer the call that Jesus has given? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Now may the peace which passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Having heard God's word, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we gather for prayer, we recognize our spiritual worship in returning the gifts that God has given us back to the saints to be used for mission and ministry here at Redemption and throughout the world. We generously and joyfully return our gifts to God for His service. And so we pray over those gifts that they might be used for His purposes here and throughout the world. Let us pray. Father God, as you called Ezekiel to faithfulness, as you called him to be a watchman, so you have called us to be faithful. To faithfully deliver the important message uh, of your forgiveness, life, and salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Bless these gifts that they would proclaim your goodness throughout the world. And bless our hearts that they might be prone to generosity, that we might Uh, that we might be a blessing to all those around us as we encounter on uh, in our daily life in your son's name we pray amen we pray for the whole people of god in christ jesus and for all people according to their needs O lord grant your people courage that with boldness we may speak your name and witness and warn sinners so that they might come to faith and repentance and so enjoy the forgiveness of their sins. Give your church wisdom and strength by your Spirit that she may be steadfast and unmovable in the word of truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, give to us good and honest leaders who will govern according to your word and will. Give us grace that we may not fail to pray for those who lead us and act as good citizens and good neighbors to one another. Give peace to the nations Bring an end to violence, prejudice, and racism. Guide us to know and respect all life from infant in the womb to the youth to beginning maturity and from mature to the aged. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you urge us to give special care and guidance to the young and to those new to the faith. Give us grace that we may not lead them into temptation or sin, but guard their faith by making them known, by making known to them the full counsel of your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
O Lord, You are the strength of the weak, the healing of the sick, the comfort to those who grieve, and the peace of those near death. Hear us on behalf of all those who have requested prayers, that they may be sustained in their afflictions, comforted in life and death, and delivered to everlasting life. Lord, in Your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, You have given the day for work and the night for rest. Bless all honest labor and industry, artists and artisans, and those in caring professions. Keep us in humility and guard us against pride and arrogance. Give to us a spirit of generosity that we may share with others the blessings that flow from our labors. Lord, in Your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, deliver us from pandemic and pestilence, from disaster and danger, and from a sudden death that kept in the faith we may be preserved through this mortal life and in death be received into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us, O Lord, who cry to you in the name of Jesus Christ, in whom we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you His peace. Amen. We join in our closing hymn, Go, My Children, With My Blessing.
Good morning, and thank you once again for joining us. Um, what a joy to be able to gather around God's good gifts. You know, um, technology is amazing. Amazing that we can still, you know, be face to face even in the strange way. But thank you. Um, thank you for being here. And I hope that, uh, that um, this has been a blessing for you as well. May the Lord bless you uh, as you go about this week as a loved and redeemed child of God. Go into the world and proclaim His message to the nations. Go in His peace. Amen.